I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. Amos chapter 4. Let's just get into this. The Lord withholds rain, sends famine and pestilence, and destroys gardens and vineyards as judgments upon his people. Yet they do not return unto the Lord. Hear this word, ye kind of Bashan, that are in the mountain of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, Bring and let us drink. The Lord God hath sworn by his holiness that, lo, the days shall come unto you, that he will take away, <clears throat> that he will take you away with hooks, and your posterity with fish hooks, and ye shall go out at the break, at the breaches, every cow at that which is before her, and ye shall cast them into the palace, saith the Lord. Now I'm assuming that the cows are a symbolic reference to the leaders of Israel, to the, the noblemen. Because of course we have the golden calves and you know, so He's saying the leaders, the nobles, are oppressing the people. And because of this, they're the one, they're going to be destroyed. Now, of course, there is a Joseph Smith translation here in verse 3. Uh, the, the King James here said, And ye shall go out at the breaches, every cow at that which is before her, and ye shall cast them into the palace, saith the Lord. Now, Joseph Smith corrects this, says, And ye shall go out at the breaches, every one before his enemy, and ye shall be cast out of your palaces, saith the Lord. Now that makes a whole lot more sense. You shall go out before the enemy and be cast out of your palaces. Not in the, it's not that the cows are going to go before the unnamed her and be cast into the palaces, but you're going to be driven out of your palaces. So, anyways, we continue. Verse 4. Come to Bethel and transgress. At Gilgal multiply transgression and bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven, and proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this liketh you, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord. Well, let's, let's pause there, actually. I like this, verses 4 and 5. You know, Come to Bethel and transgress. Uh, you guys like doing all these wickedness. You got Bethel, Gilead. You, you got your centers of idol worship and everything that you like doing. You keep doing that. You keep doing that. You, you don't want to worship me. You know, this is God, God's saying me. I know you like your idol worship, so you keep doing that, and we'll see what happens. Now, there is another Joseph Smith translation here. This is uh, verse 5, where it says at the end of the verse, For this liketh you, for this liketh you, O ye children of Israel. So this is saying, you know, in the King James, like you like doing these evil things. But Joseph Smith corrects this to say, For thus do ye, O ye children of Israel. So, again, a, a correction in grammar. Still the same basic meaning, but makes a little bit more sense. But now we're going to read the rest of this here. It's uh, 6 through 13. Should be the judgments of God here. Let's see what happens. Verse 6. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And also I have withholden the rain from you, when there was yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained... It rained not, withered. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew, when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased. The palmer worm devoured them, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Your young men have I slain with the sword, and have taken away your horses, and I have made the stink of your camps to come up unto your nostrils. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Therefore thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. For lo, he that formeth the mountains, and createth the wind, and declareth unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness, and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. So yes, I like this. God is rehearsing. Okay. I tried to get you to pay attention by giving you some prosperity. Didn't work. I withheld the rain. 
caused drought in you, you, you still didn't remember me. I do all these things. I chastise you. God's basically saying, I have done everything I can to get you to repent. And nothing's working. It's like a father trying to correct a wayward son. And his son just isn't getting it. He says, fine. Last resort. We're going to destroy it. We're wiping the, the kingdom out because you're just not listening to me. And if this is the only way I can get you to actually listen, then this is what we're going to have to do. So it, it's it's kind of a pitiful lament of a father over his wayward children. Now, there is a final Joseph Smith translation here in verse 6, way back in verse 6. Let's go back and review this. In the King James, it says, And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and want of bread in all your places. Joseph Smith makes this very simple correction, changing the first word and to therefore. Therefore also have I given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and want of bread in all your places. It's an an odd change. I'm not sure it really changes the meaning in any way, but Joseph Smith felt the need to correct it. Anyways, we'll pick this up in chapter 5. See you then.